So hello and welcome to season 11 of the Mundane to Magical online summit series. My name is Louise Matson, and as always, I truly, truly am blessed to be your host. This is the penultimate live call of this season, um, and I have thoroughly enjoyed it and I hope you have too. But let's carry on with this call. I do feel truly blessed for today's live call as I welcome back a much loved returning speaker, David Farrell. Now, today's live call is at a slightly earlier time due to something that I'm sure David will talk through um, in our conversation, um, but he sustained a serious injury prior to the summit and I am so, so grateful that he feels able to join us today. Um, David's conversations are always so rich and so deep with many, many layers to the energetic transmission as he often shares the wisdom, not only of the plant consciousness, but of the stars as well, and combines them in a, in a beautiful harmony, um, especially talking of the energies of these times. So for those who don't know David, he is a quantum plant alchemist, a bard, and a plant medicine man who works with the elemental forces of nature, quantum plant, tree, and fungi intelligence as a quantum plant shaman to do powerful remote healings for people. And with Bella, his co-founder of both the Quantum Plant Healing and Quantum Planet World websites, he creates amazing courses and shares amazing wisdom. So through the Quantum Plant Healing website, they hold global plant immersions, which I can highly recommend for they enable people worldwide to meet in a safe and sacred quantum space and join with the plant trans, uh, the transmissions of plant intelligence for not only healing, but for personal realization and wisdom and guidance as well, because the plants are as much our teachers as any conscious being on this planet. And through the Quantum Planet World website, David and Bella aim to connect communities that are making a difference by creating a better world through the quantum ideas. And this is where you can find courses on such things as the Stellar Nations, which Leslie Shankman um, so graciously joined us with and spoke to of yesterday, as well as the Sacred Art of Geomancy, which is land healing, and Bella's new course, which is um, obviously David will probably touch upon the Mayan time and magic. Now, David also runs a YouTube channel where he co-hosts many, many wonderful wisdom sharings, um, such as Web of Weird with Pete Jackson Maine, Moons and Mythos with the astrologer Kelly Hunter, and Food as Medicine with Rebecca O'Reilly, and so much more. There's interviews on there with um, Leslie Shankman about stellar nations and other things, as well as his partner, Bella. So please do check out the wide variety of wisdom sharings that David has available to us all. Now, the topic for today's conversation is a goodie. Um, it's all about stepping onto the new earth timeline and it's time to really wake up and remember who we really truly are. Now, I felt a, a major shift in the energy since the eclipse, and, and I'm sure many other sensitive people will have too. So we can really tangibly feel this pull, this draw to really step up and step forth on our own divine paths. So in this special and unique talk, David will share how we can navigate ourselves onto the new earth timeline by raising our frequency and letting go of the dense energy that it really no longer serves us and allow it to dismantle with grace around us. David will be sharing on a very personal level how he has and continues to navigate the energies of the major astrological aspects that we're all experiencing but also weaving into the cosmic history codes and the mind magic that have also been major players in the very personal impact the current energies have had on his journey. Now, this conversation weaves together with and in the beautiful, wonderful conversation we've already had with Leslie Shankman regarding Stellar Nations and the amazing conversation yet to come with Bella Alvaran, who will take us on an introductory journey into Mayan time and magic held within. And as always, please feel free to make comments and ask questions as we go along. I'll try and weave as many into the conversation as we can. And so without further ado, it truly is an honour and a pleasure to welcome you back to the show, David. 
<laughs> wow, thank you Lou, so much. And that's quite the introduction. I, I could take a leaf out of your book. My introductions are generally a lot shorter than that. And thank you so much. That's very kind, everything that you've said there. And uh, welcome everybody. It's great to be back. I really enjoy doing these summit talks with Lou. We have a lot in common and we talk a lot in between these shows about many things that are um, of common interest to us. But uh, I'm very aware today that uh, my internet has been playing up a little bit. I think it's part of what's going on in the collective atmospheric. So if I do glitch out or if I uh, get stuck a little bit, please do bear with me. Remember that I'm down here in the wilds of Mexico. So to have an internet connection at all, actually, some days is a miracle. Um, but, you know, Lou, I think that we have to be thankful sometimes for the technology. And, you know, it's not necessarily something I was going to talk about, but it is something that I think is worth sharing that without the technology, without the assistance, even of AI sometimes, which I know is a big trigger point for many people and has been for me too, we wouldn't be able to do these conversations. In fact, we probably wouldn't have been, me and Bella certainly wouldn't have been able to do everything that we've done over the last two or three years, which... You know, I have so many wonderful connections with people like yourself and the wonderful Pam Gregory, of course, and our sister Janet Trelawa, who channels Zach. And yet I've never met any of you, <laughs> never met any of you in person. Yet I feel a profound connection to all of you at a higher level, at a heart level. And so when I think about that, I'm like, wow, we really do have a lot to thank. Even Zoom, which well, gives me some problems sometimes. <laughs> uh, but you know what? So isn't that an interesting place to start this conversation about the paradoxes of duality and how, according to where we put our attention and intention, we can perceive things in different ways. And, you know, before anybody wants to shoot me and say, oh, AI and, uh, and Bill Gates and da, da 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 and Elon Musk is like, hey, look, I'm not necessarily saying that I'm on board with all of their plans and ideas either. But at the same time, I do see that artificial intelligence is going to be a part of our future. And perhaps it's more about how we start to embrace that from a positive new earth timeline, rather than saying, hey, it's being manipulated by the dark forces, which has been true, but I do perceive has somewhat changed. So I guess that's quite an, of an interesting place to, to start today's talk. Yeah, absolutely. And I can't remember whose conversation it was in, or maybe it was just some channeling I did with a client, but it's, it's all about you know, when we when we take our power back, when we start stepping into ourselves, our true selves, the wider perception of ourselves, then yes, these things may exist in the outer reality, but it doesn't mean to say that we have to accept them in the way that they've been thrust upon us. That's so true. we can actually connect in with them and raise the frequency of everything you know, AI, you know, the different systems that are in place. And and certainly for me, with the dismantling of the rigid structure systems that, you know, we have had in place for centuries now, probably millennia, millennia yeah. they are dismantling. But it doesn't mean to say everything has to completely turn to ash and we start from scratch. We can we can bring the weaving of our higher frequencies into the the restructure and the rebuild of that which already exists. And I think it's the same with things like, you know, the technology and things that exist, because like you say, Zoom's enabled us to connect and share the esoteric wisdoms, to connect in and, and connect in with tribes that we wouldn't necessarily have you know we would feel isolated without these kinds of technologies and so yeah absolutely it's the vibration and the frequency that you utilize things with yeah brilliant i couldn't agree with you more lou and, and i think that that's again part of the tapestry that i want to try and weave in today's uh talk and you know, um, I'm also going to use uh, my recent uh, so-called accident, although I'm not really seeing it that way anymore. I'm seeing it more like a blessing. And and, and thankfully, due to my work as, a, as a, a plant medicine person, although that part of my identity, I guess, is also moving away from me now. I feel that that world of healing is also something more of the old paradigm. And as we move into a new earth timeline and fifth dimensional consciousness, the need to heal in that way is not really going to be present or even necessary. And I'll explain more about that later as we get deeper into this talk but thank you for the wonderful setup uh you know kind of made me realize just how busy I've been uh and along with Bella you know over the last couple of years and it, we, we have been pretty relentless I have to say um but it was always coming from a different space it was always coming from the plants it was always coming from higher intuition it was always coming from our higher selves or as I'm now realizing really our future selves and that's also part of today's talk is about time travel and so I'm going to weave in various elements that you alluded to in the the opening introduction there that does include our cosmology, our DNA coding, astrology, Mayan time, and of course, a little bit of a plant medicine too. Uh, and I'm, I also pulled a card with my wonderful new pack that I am showing off a little bit at the moment. It's called uh, the Enchanted Map Oracle uh, oh, card. Oh, I've got those. 
They're really good. I, I I bought them actually um at the end of last year when I was in the US with Bella and I thought, oh, I think I'm going to need those cards for, for, for some kind of journey that I'm going to go on quite soon. So it was already coming to me. I, I've often been a very, um how to say, future oriented person. And, and my adventures of the last couple of months uh, since really the beginning of February have, have shown me why. And this is where the mind glyph comes in. This is where mind time comes in. So when I was thinking about the title for today's talk, Lou, I was like, well, how to weave in all of the things that I've experienced, how to weave in what I've come to learn about myself and how to relate that in some way so that it's a benefit to other people. So this is not meant to be a grandiose talk about uh, me in that sense. It's more uh, perhaps what I would like to suggest is I'm more of a mouthpiece or a conduit for a series of experiences that have happened to me that I've been able to observe, uh, which have been very, very weird uh, at times, uh, but I'm somewhat used to them being a Skywalker. Hey, uh, and it's good to see the animals in the house too. Um, and so... Yeah, this is, this has often been a difficult conversation to have, Lou. I've had this conversation with you quite a few times and other people in a similar space, but to really go into the non-dualistic aspects of fifth dimensional consciousness, really, uh, I've had to lean very heavily at times on my Buddhist, uh, my years in the Buddhist school in Italy and in India and the teachings that I received about attachments and aversions. Mm -hmm. and how really the root of all suffering or what they call dukkha comes down to those two afflictions, attachments and aversions. And I didn't believe them at the time. And I've shared this quite a few times since, but I'm going to reiterate it because I think it's a really important meditation to take. And I spent a long time like trying to disprove this as I tried to disprove most of the things that my lamas told me only to realize that they were right, <laughs> of course, because they were coming from a profound source. But that's part of what we're also taught as a good Buddhist student is to question everything and to run it through your system, to use it as a, as a logical debate in your mind to meditate on these things. And so I did. And I found that they were correct. All forms of suffering come down to an attachment to something or an aversion to something. Yeah. So that's my sort of exhibit A in this journey that I'm going to weave today is, is think about that, because when we start to see, like, what is it that causes this suffering? Well, I think the first so-called great sacred pause, as some people have called 2020, uh, the lockdown, the first lockdown was really, uh, I really had to say, a way of the light showing how it works in duality. So for many people, myself included at the time, it seemed like quite an onerous experience. However, in the end, it wasn't really because I was out in the countryside of Wales. So my lockdown mostly involved three, four, five hour walks in the forest, sometimes with my favorite plant medicines, conversing with particularly Archangel Mikael at that point and asking to see what is actually going on here. So I used the lockdown time to go skywalking, journeying with my natural ability and gifts to do that and to ask questions and i've saw many many things most of which i haven't been able to talk about and when i did i got shot down or i got uh, yelled at by people who didn't want to hear it mm -hmm. so i sort of had to change tack a little bit and i also had to eat some humble pie and admit that i didn't know everything and even the information that i came that came through somehow i had to work out is this something that's already happened is this something that is happening or is this something that's about to happen which was also when my sense of reality and time started to break down a lot more and I think that perhaps the lockdown did that for many of us in, in many ways it sort of forced us to confront many things like who am I living with am I happy in this situation um what uh, how much i know that we've talked about this one how much of um my life is full of distractions not necessarily bad ones but how much time am i spending watching sport and football which was one of mine how much am i enjoying a, a beverage a cerveza or a beer a little bit too often well it turned out quite a bit in my case i like my beer but you know these are all things that uh, had to be acknowledged and looked at and you know, I saw that with the rollout of the so-called offered medications, which have now, of course, are very much being disclosed for anyone who wants to look at it. And that's not the subject of today's talk. And even that feels already very much in the past. I'm like, wow, does anyone even really remember what happened in 2020? Does anyone remember the severe psyops that we experienced, the unending oppressive energies that were being pumped to this? I, I think many people have forgotten about that or they've just tried to delete it or... Maybe it's been deleted from their awareness. You know, that's another thought to put into the rabbit box. But what am I doing here? I'm trying to set up how did we get to this place? What has been the process? And one of the things that Archangel Mikael shared with me in 2020, he, he said, David, look, uh, there are many things that we in the light will never do, but we're quite happy to let the dark do our dirty work for us. And I was like, wow, OK. And he said, we we never want to hurt anybody. Uh, we never want to cause suffering to, to anybody. But at the same time, we realize that humanity is not waking up 
And that is why we have let this bioweapon be released and everything that followed downstream from that. Because I questioned many things, Lou, at that time. Yeah. And I was just like, you know, this doesn't feel very pleasant. If this is coming from the light, I'm not seeing it. And and Mikhail explained to me, so no, this is not coming from us, but we are allowing it to happen because we perceive that it's going to be a way to wake people up. And I was like, well, could we not have done it in a more gentle way? And he said, hey, man, look at the last like 100 years we've been trying, uh, but nobody wanted to acknowledge it because they're too attached. Here we go, the attachments and aversions to the goggle box, uh, to the narratives being presented, to the division in our world, to going on holiday every couple of months, to going out and eating in restaurants every couple of nights. Uh, basically anything and everything that will stop you looking at what your life is actually about and what's going on for you. So the first lockdown, I think, really showed us that, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, I knew something was going to happen, um, like many channels, but I didn't obviously get told exactly what it was going to be. But when it started, I was like, oh, OK. But I, I got shown that it was a golden moment. It was a golden opportunity for those who are ready to stop and reflect and, you know, retune themselves to a more aligned path. Um but yeah, it was it was the sacred pause, um, and it was for me it was actually very beautiful. I mean, apart from my relationship ending and you know various other things happening, but that again in its own way was a beautiful part of the process because I now truly am on my aligned path, and you know even though my previous path was comfortable, it wasn't fully in alignment. So yeah, I completely agree with you, and and absolutely. Um, there is always a bigger, bigger picture. And so, um, you know, we may, from our human point of view, look on things as good, bad, right, wrong. But from the wider collective space, from the even wider than that kind of cosmic space. Yeah, sometimes what our ego would perceive as challenging, bad, you know, not pleasant things do have to take place for the greatest and highest good. Um, and it, you know, it's coming into that place of detachment and being able to, to kind of, even if you can't see the bigger picture, trust that there is a, a bigger um, divine picture uh, playing itself out. And very much like you, you know, I had an extreme physical experience, which, you know, shut me down for a period of time, which from an egoic perspective, I went, oh my God, it's the worst thing that's happened because I was paralyzed. But mm -hmm. From that, I took it gave me the time out from working and bringing the money in and all of this because I got sick pain and stuff to actually do the spiritual work that I had not had the time to do because I was so tangled up and attached in all the drama of my life. Mm -hmm. So, again, the biggest blessing I ever had in my life was that experience. And um, and so I can now look on everything you know, whether it's affecting me personally or globally from that much more kind of divine picture of, oh, I get it, you know, this has to happen so that X, Y, Z that I can't see can happen. Right, exactly. I think you just said that so beautifully and you brought it in the key word there, which I'm, I'm going to definitely expand on, which is trust. And mm. uh, when you have a more fifth dimensional experience, which I had many in 2020, one of the blessings was that I was given some really beautiful uh, Santa Maria medicine in the form of, it was my friend called it Kanagi. I'm just going <laughs> to, so it was a kind of a, a THC butter and it was really, really amazing medicine that nobody else seemed to like, but I, I, I found it really resonated with me quite well. And so I spent every single day uh, during the lockdown sitting under certain trees uh, down at the famous uh, ruined abbey in the village that I lived in, in central Wales called Abbey Camere, uh, where the last true prince of Wales, Llewellyn at Griffiths, is buried. And I would uh, every day on my way to my tree, I would acknowledge that freedom fighter for his efforts to free uh, Wales from the grip of, of basically the same energies that we have been under a global grip, um, but in the form that time of the Norman um, conquerors who were trying to invade Wales. And so the story hasn't changed an awful lot since his time. So I, I deeply resonated with that being, and I, and I pledged at that time, whatever is in my capacity as a spiritual being, as a spiritual warrior, particularly, I will step up and do whatever I can. And even if I fight a one man fight during this next couple of years, I will go into the astral planes with my fairly extensive uh, assistance and crew and allies and other warriors that I have uh, around me. And I will do whatever I can to, to start dismantling the system. And so it was a long fight. It's been a long fight, four years. And, you know, in the middle of all of that, at the same time, doing healing work on people, much like you, and uh, really, well, 
once we had the offer medications going into people system i was like i don't like this i i sense the energy of it already incoming before it arrived as many of us did and it's like this is going to fundamentally change everything so i had to pretty much change most of my healing practice to now start incorporating the so-called shedding effects but also at first i didn't even want to to do any clearings on people who'd had the offered medications because i wasn't sure what i was dealing with and i eventually came to realize that we were dealing with quite a lot and you know that then led to many things including the rainbow bridge journey that's over on quantum plant healing many other things but I don't really want to talk so much about the healing of what's happened already, because we kind of, I think if we're here and we're listening to this interview or even being a part of this interview, we probably already, uh, you know, traverse most of that. So what I want to focus on is what's coming next. And, you know, uh, I'm going to weave in um, my accident really as the first part of that. So for those of you who don't know, um, on, on the leap day, the 29th of February, I was watering in my garden, uh, as I've done many, many times before. And our, our house here is built on terraces. Uh, it's actually built on the side of a very ancient pyramid. It's a 500-year-old uh, Franciscan monastic building that is next to a seminary and uh, a very Catholic church with, until very recently, very inverted energy, which is very much a part of the energy of Mexico and something that I perceive is now about to who disappear from our world finally the beings that were holding sway over the catholic church particularly the vatican have been removed that is something that happened on the eclipse something that many of us have been working towards thank god um we may see that start to appear in our awareness quite soon but i'll come to that later in the talk so so i was watering on the side of uh, one of these terraces and i had my hose that i've done a hundred times or more before and i was watering the plants below and the hose came away in my hand and i started to fall like straight down. And I had literally, I think, a split second to think, uh, this is a bad one, dude. Like, what are you going to do? Uh, I'm going to try and land this. I think I'm going to be okay. If I land straight down, I might not hurt myself. <laughs> Boom. I landed straight down, uh, literally vertically into an empty fish pond below, a fall of about 12 to 13, 14 feet, I guess, about three and a half meters. So not a huge fall, but far enough uh, to cause serious damage. And even to this moment, Lou, uh, I, I consider how I landed a miracle. The surgeon who worked on me uh, is, is also an incredible being that I want to acknowledge a little bit. Uh, the wonderful Saint Santiago, uh, who was my quantum surgeon uh, in Guadalajara. But I'll share more about that in a second, because it's part of the story of trust that I want to share today. And then how that relates to how we can use my experience maybe as, as something like you did with your experience. Very, very similar, really. And uh, in the process of having this accident so-called, uh, I realized that many other beings have had similar life-changing accidents that actually has completely cleared stuff from their field. And they've then come out of that a completely different person. And I can say that even just a month, six weeks, however it is now, I lose track since that uh, so -called accident, I, I am a different person. I've sensed many aspects of me leaving and being Skywalk and being able to work in these different dimensions. I've been able to observe from the fifth dimension, the pain body victim aspect of the being that really was David uh, leaving uh, and perhaps even died in that fall. And the bit that I haven't shared so much with people is what happened in the two weeks before that. So I'd been feeling very weird, uh, probably since the end of January. I, I'd even said to Bella, my partner, I said, I'm not feeling good. Uh, she'd actually gone back to Texas to spend time with her daughter. So we were having to to uh, manage two different spaces, which was, uh, you know, just a 3D challenge, but it was, it was fine. And I said to her, I'm not feeling good. I feel like something very powerful, maybe even death is coming towards me. I felt it very close. It's not the first time I felt death close to me. I know the frequency. I've even met Santa Muerte or the Grim Reaper uh, a number of times and had conversations. Um, I've even been through death experiences on my sacred fungi journeys. They they took me through a process actually earlier this year and, and tried to show me, David, what's the difference? Uh, if, if, if you had died in the jungle six years ago, as we want to tell you that you did, then how do you perceive this reality? I'm like, well, I don't know. Like, uh, how would I tell the difference? And they're like, exactly. You wouldn't be able to tell the difference. And that's the point that we want to share with you. So they were really starting to try and finally, uh, whatever was still lodged in me as a sort of a concept of time and space, and even um, how to say reality experience was being really sort of un un unpegged, uh, I think, in readiness for what was about to happen. So that happened probably back in January. I then got into February and my sacred fungi medicine said, uh, David, we need you to do three journeys in the next eight days on powerful, I have it written here in my diary, but on powerful days to do with Chiron. So I was like, okay, that sounds kind of uh, serious. And they're like, yes, uh, it is. Uh, but it's really, really important that you do this. This is your moment to fix everything. And I was like, okay, sure, I'm up for that. And like, 
uh, like Lou said, also in 2020, I'd already been through a process of letting go of my old life. I'd left Wales. I'd left my community. I'd left my previous relationship, many, many things uh, that really needed to come to an end for me to step onto my divine destiny path. And so it was difficult to let go of everything to, you know, to sell all of my items and to put the rest in the skip and then just bring free bags to Mexico as my life was was somewhat humbling. And also at the same time, rebirthing, it was a refreshing process somehow. And, you know, uh, when I first got here, it was a, it was a mess. And uh, the people I came to stay with who were current there, as I, I quickly realized had been uh with the offered medications which was not what i was expecting so i'm like oh my gosh these are healers and now they've taken this inverted medicine on board too what am i meant to do i'm going to be living with these people and up until that point i've been sort of separating myself out and so i was very quickly forced to say okay i'm going to have to live with this energy and with this uh whatever is going on for these people up close so that's when i started to then do clearings and healings on people who had had the offer medications. I took advice from from Zach, who Janet uh, Chalawa channels, and I said, okay, uh, what what do you advise here, brother? And he said, well, this is investigation work, David. You know the routine, you know what you do, and you know how effective it is, but now you're going to have to start looking at other things and try and put this into the picture as well. And it was dangerous work. I definitely got sick a couple of times uh, from that work, even though it's all done at the quantum level and done remotely. It doesn't make it any less dangerous, as you will know, Lou, because you're dealing with the energy that is affecting somebody in the physical body. And, you know, over the years of doing my work, uh, I came to realize that whatever is in the physical body is something that has actually got its root cause somewhere else in the energetic realms, normally in the well, nearly always in the fourth dimension, the astral um, planes where the human emotional body uh, resides. And in the lower astrals, that is where we encounter all of the monsters, the so-called black magics, the inverted frequencies, and of course, everything that was in the offered medications and everything that was being shedded, which was a lot of nasty stuff. Mm -hmm. Lots of heavy metal, lots of graphene. Uh, I found it very interesting. I think it's Dr. Arkis started to talk about the snake venom that was in the offered medications and how people that were with tobacco weren't being affected as much. And I am a tobacco. It's one of the lineages I was initiated, initiated into in South America. So I thought that was all very interesting. And when I first did my um, first clearing on somebody who'd had the offered medication and it affected me, I felt my body being poisoned. I was actually in the forest. I went for a walk into the forest afterwards. And some part of my intuition said, that but you need to check in to see what really happened in that clearing. So I took just a little bit of my sacred fungi medicine and I went into the forest and for about two hours, nothing really came through. I was like, oh, okay, seems like everything's fine. And as is often the case with that medicine, the moment that thought came into my mind, I suddenly realized everything was not fine at all. And I wasn't feeling very good. And I had to sit under a tree and check in with myself. And I'm like, okay, what's going on? And I felt this poison, so I can describe it, rushing up through my body and going straight from my, basically my brain, my lower mind, and I started to get this uh, voice. You've got the, you know what, you've got the, you know what, you've got the, you know, I'm like, no, but I don't believe in that. That can't be true. I don't believe in it. It doesn't matter. You've got it. You've got it. And so at that point, there was almost like a mini psychological break. And my higher self stepped fully into the space and said, right, dude, we've got you. Don't worry. You're going to have to get home. You're going to have to have some of your tobacco medicine, the, the, the tobacco snuff that I work with. And we're going to have to blast this out. But don't panic. If you panic, it's going to take control. You need to isolate the poison in your system. And we're going to hold it there. And you're going to have to work with me at the mental level to keep it out. Otherwise, it's going to get into the metals in your brain where it's trying to create a circuit loop. And I was like, oh, my God, this is quite full on. <laughs> and they're like, Yeah, we know. Uh, but don't worry. We're going to guide you home. So I got guided home through a series of trees. One of them was a huge old uh, alder tree next to a beautiful stream. And what I realized, I learned many things on that journey home and subsequently about many things. But the alder tree was able to lower my uh, heart rate and thus my breath. <clears throat> And it brought me into a much deeper state of breathing that allowed me to get control because there was definitely an element of panic because I didn't know what was going on. Mm -hmm. And I got home and I could feel the poison still in me. And I had my tobacco uh, snuff, probably the biggest round of tobacco I've ever had. And for about two minutes, I was like, oh, it hasn't worked. I still feel this thing. And I had my eyes closed and, and the medicine said, OK, brother, open your eyes now. It's gone. And I was like, Phew. Yeah, wow, it's gone. Okay, what was that? So that was the beginning of the jigsaw puzzle, really, Lou, that led me on the adventure that has brought me to this point. It's like, okay, what the hell is happening here to, to humanity? We are under some huge experience. And I was like, wow, okay. So that was when I had to roll up my sleeves and say, okay, as a healer, even though I don't really want to do this work, I, I as a naturally curious Scorpio, I want to know what is happening here. 
And so probably by the, the point last year when I stopped doing the healing work, I must have healed, you know done healings. I, I prefer to say clearings rather than healings, actually. My job is really just to remove stuff from people's fields and expose where the actual healing needs to take place. Because in the end, it's only us as individuals that can do healing. So, you know, I just want to make that distinction. And so I probably mm, had done about 100 clearings on, on so-called uh, people with the offered medications and had learned many things, learned about what was in those injections and everything else, but still it was in a world where we can't even talk about it, not even in our own community up until the summer of last year, where we were able to talk about this because we had lots of those people in our community. I mean, every time we tried to talk about it in this kind of uh, forum, people would get super triggered. And it's like, you can't say those things. And I thought this was a place of healing. And it's like, yeah, that's why we're trying to talk about these things. Um, you know, so it, it was difficult. And then something snapped, I'd say probably around about June or July, and uh, we'd already put out the quantum plant upgrade protocols, all of which was working with the pendulum, working with our higher selves, same way that you do, I think, to remove the things in our field that don't serve us, the dense energies. Now, for those who didn't have the offered medications, it was different. We were still dealing very much with the human emotional baggage. For those that did have the offered medications, what I quickly realized is that most of that stuff was no longer in their field. But what was in their field was a whole host of other nasties, really, really toxic stuff. Uh, I did one clearing on somebody and I had some of my fungi medicine to connect into the space. And even before I opened the circle, the medicine came on in like two minutes, which is always a bad sign. I'm like, oh no, this, this isn't gonna go well. And I started vomiting in, in the shower before I even opened space. I'm like, oh my God, this, this is not good. I finally opened space and, and did the clearing. And for the first 20 minutes, I was actually vomiting into a bucket. And I was like, oh, oh my God, like what's this? And when the medicine showed me, it was like my head had been stuck into a chemical bath. Mm. And I was like, this is disgusting. So I started to quickly realize, wow, if this is in people's fields, this is going to attack their immune systems. Yeah. So I realized that there was basically a process of soul degradation. That is the point I'm coming to here, to disconnect us from our multidimensional cells, particularly our capacity to, to, to traverse the fourth dimension, the astral planes, and to connect into our fifth dimensional self, which is a place of unconditional love, the place of non-duality, the place of non-polarization, also the place of the goddess. And now I'm realizing the restored masculine in the form of the, the Christo or the Christ consciousness. You know, the, the, the energy of Jesus and Mary has been very, very strong over the last couple of months, not just for me, but many of our group as well. And it certainly came through strongly a number of times in healings that people were doing for me. Beautiful healings that really uh, actually shifted a lot in the process. So the talk is stepping onto the new earth timeline. And what I just shared there was really a sort of a review of how do we get to this place? Because if anyone's still watching the goggle box, which I do a little bit, because I get intuitions about the energies of stuff. And so I check to see what is the narrative being presented. And we can see from last weekend to this weekend that we are being presented very strongly with the narrative of Armageddon war. That is what the narrative wants to present us with. Now, that was a very strong possibility uh, at various points, but that I can assure everybody is not going to happen. It may look like it happens, but from what I'm understanding, the old paradigm has gone. All of the structures that we understood, the financial structures, the political structures, even the health structures, things that people trusted implicitly, possibly foolishly, I would suggest. But anyway, um, you know, at different points. They are all now going to be exposed for the great spell and lie that they were. And, you know, um, one of my major considerations post accident was where to have surgery, because one of the things that I perceived here in Mexico was that the effects of the offer medication had had a very damaging effect on the souls of people. When people talked about zombie apocalypse, Lou, I could see it here very clearly from the moment I arrived. It's like these poor people have suffered already a lot in the last 500 years with the conquest and everything else and the great lies that have been told about their cultures and their past, particularly the Mayan culture and the Aztecas and or the um, the Aslans to give them their proper name and many other cultures. And now they've been goaded and uh, bribed into having this told if they don't have this medication, they will lose their jobs or they won't be allowed to practice as healers. And I heard every story under the sun. Yeah. And, you know, I find it very distressing to see these people's souls leaving. And I could see the, the, the fogginess around. I'm like, oh, my gosh, like, you know, how did I end up here in the middle of all of this? And so, you know, then the compulsion even more to explore and say, okay, what's coming down the road? I know that New Earth is coming. We were told that in 2020 by our elders in the astrology, that was going to be the turning point and that 2024 was going to be probably the most difficult point. And by the time we got to spring 2025, we would be in a different space. So that's when I really started to tune in strongly. And I have to thank the wonderful sister that is Pam Gregory for this, because... 
I got uh, the nudge from one of my medicines to to reach out to her and to to ask if she'd be willing to do an interview. And she was. She replied instantly, much to my surprise. And that's when we did the very first video, which was about Saturn squaring Uranus. It was called Organic versus Inorganic. And it was our first kind of foray into looking at how to weave astrology and more kind of Earth-based uh, elements together. And as a consequence, I got very into astrology and I've been blessed enough to learn so much from Pam, but also the wonderful Kelly Hunter, who I was doing Moons and Mythos with and many other people, uh, people like Molly McCord, who I really respect and whose astrology has just gone to a different space recently, really beautiful channeling. She's able to go into the collective. And when I'm watching her videos, I feel like, hey, I feel like we just connected somehow at the 5D level, which tells me that we are now getting into a telepathic space where even though the video was already recorded and I was watching it somewhat in the future, somehow I felt a, a connection that happened that somehow manifested in what she was sharing. I was like, I've had these experiences before, but it's becoming more regular, which tells me that we are now coming more into a collective consciousness where in the field, those of us that can tap into that part of ourself can also connect to others who can do that. Hence what I was sharing at the beginning of this video is that even though we've only ever met in Zoom, Lou, me and you have had those connections and I've had those connections with Bella and with Pam and many people and sometimes not even even on the Zoom, I've had Pam's higher self come and visit me a number of times to ask me certain things or, or, or you know, query certain things about the talks that we were going to do. And, you know, all of that I found very, very strange, but also very illuminating and very exciting. And it's got me to this point now with the accident where when I fell, what had happened in the journeys beforehand was I was given a number of bits of homework to do. Uh, even though I spent the better part of 15 years doing my inner work, I spent time in the Amazon learning to be a medicine man, working with powerful medicines like ayahuasca, learning to hone my abilities in the astral plane with the sacred fungi. And then I met Bella, of course, a couple of years ago, and she started to explain my natural tendency to do this through my mind glyph, which is the cosmic Skywalker. So my natural tendency is to go out into other dimensional journeys and realms and it's caused me a lot of problems in my life because no one's really understood me <laughs> and one of the things that happened very profoundly before the accident was that I was asked to go into the underworld and extract the last remnants of myself who were still lording it up down there some some elements of, of we can say the greater being that is David in this incarnation didn't really want to give up their status they enjoyed the power and the strength and protection that was given to them by the underworld denizens, the, the mafia, um, you know, bosses, as I'm now calling them, the big powerful beings that have held sway over our planet. Over the last 4,000 years, some of our Anunnaki ancestors, and not just them, some of the fallen dragons. I know you're also working with stellar nations. And, you know, uh, that's also something I'm going to allude to in, in a minute. But I was given this option to, to do that work. And I did. I pulled them out. And my future self, my higher self, stepped in and said, David, um, it's, we need to get these guys on board because unless we all come together and become integrated, none of us are going to make it out of this situation. We're all going to perish here. I was like, that doesn't sound good. He's like, no, that's why we need to go and get these guys out because they don't want to come. Mm -hmm. So I had to go in. I had to wrestle with a number of other beings in the underworld um, uh, and eventually managed to convince those other parts of myself that were still, I think, on other timelines, really, particularly ancient Egypt and a few other less promising uh, timelines. And I was like, guys, like, don't listen to me. Listen to our future self. He's telling us that if we don't do this now, we're all finished here. We're all screwed. None of us are going to make it. And there was all the grumbling. One individual, particularly a powerful uh, aspect of myself, did not want to do that. He's like, no, I, I'm happy down here. I, I've got status. I'm a lord. And I've got protection and magic and power. And I'm like, yeah, I know. But it, it doesn't really matter. None of that's going to count for anything unless you leave. So eventually uh, they did leave on that particular journey. I saw the trap door shut to the stairs leading down into the underworld. <laughs> and then I got taken on another journey where I was presented with a series of timelines that could all play out. And there were about 20 to 30 different timelines. And it took maybe half an hour in the journey. And only two or three of them ended well. And I saw them as silver threads leading into the future. And all of the other ones ended very badly, not just for me, but for my partnership, for the work that I was doing, even for humanity on some time. And so I'm like, well, that seems kind of strong. And I'm like, just remember, dude, you know, fractal, uh, micro, macro, whatever happens for you is also part of the collective story. And so with that conscious awareness, you can also have in your own way an effect on what is going to happen. I'm like, wow, that's kind of big. And they said, yeah, you know, this this is what's at stake right now. And, you know, this was literally two days before the oak emotion started, Lou. And the oak is a very powerful ally of mine. And he said to me, David, you need to, he was actually one of the ones who instructed me to do the journeys he said i will not let you hold space for others until you've resolved these outstanding issues that you have 
And I'm like, okay, all right, boss, you know, I respect you. I've worked with you for many years. I've held space with you and, um, you know, had uh, clearings from you and healings from you too. So I respect you. And so I did that work. And he then basically was the organizer of everything that happened. And I said, okay, um, I don't know what's going to happen if I accept these other deals that you're putting on the table, but I've done this process before. Uh, I know that Mikhail protects me. So I trust him. I trust all of you that whatever you're asking me to do is going to work out well, because why would it not? And that's the big piece there, Lou, is the trust. I had to go into a deep space of trust, and I've been in it. I've had to be in it ever since for a variety of reasons. And I took the deal. I said, okay, I want that beautiful future that we've been planning that's very new earth, that's very higher frequency to play out. That's my whole gig. It's why I'm here. And I said, okay, David, uh, we can't tell you what's going to happen, but it might hurt. But don't worry, we've got you. Mm. Two days later, I fell, pushed jumped leaped whatever you can say uh but came off the ledge landed in a very very rare position even the surgeon said to me said in all of my years doing surgery on people's feet i've never really seen an injury like this david it's a miracle that you didn't break your legs you didn't break your knees you didn't break your spine you didn't break your neck and you didn't come head first i'm like i know it's all a miracle right <laughs> i don't know how i did that but you know um that was the first part of the story and i was like i was in a deep place of shock i think lou for really up until just a few days ago i'm not really sure how present i was in my body um you know uh all of the wonderful support that people sent and i'm sure including some of your audience i i am so grateful for the love the support the healing the financial contributions all of which were needed and have been used in in the process um you know because you all know doing the work that we do doesn't really pay much more than the bills and even running global immersions is it's there isn't an awful lot left in the kitty afterwards so so that was all good i've been living as my allies have asked me to with, with what was needed rather than anything excessive because of what's about to happen, because everything that's in the old paradigm doesn't really have any value. So monetary and you know, money in the bank, all of those things, they're just fake. They're illusions that the financial systems have given us as part of the slavery. Now, what I'm going to share next from the surgery might uh, resonate a little bit with you, judging from what you shared on one of your talks. But because of the stellar nations journey that I had been on since the summer of last year, around the time of the Rainbow Bridge journey, one of the protocols that had been given to us by the plants was from dandelion, which is the recalibration and cleaning of the, um, how to say, corrupted or missing DNA. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the protocols we did. And literally five days later, we started on the Stellar Nations pathway, <laughs> which I understood immediately from dandelion was like, okay, this is how you're going to experience that DNA realignment playing out. And, you know, blessings to the wonderful Leslie Shankman, who I know you had on yesterday, and I do the Cosmic History Codes show with so much love and respect for that woman, because what she laid out with the pathway, I mean, Bella then with the 13 nations for the end of for the second half of last year, radically altered everything I understood uh, about myself and realized that everything weird that had happened in my life could be explained by by this, my Antares Code, which is one of my star maps that I always have close by along with my natal astrology. And I started to realize that I'd already experienced most of the stuff that was in my in my codes uh, and being very empathic, being very psychic and being a Skywalker. I'd always had these very weird experiences that no one else could really explain. In the end, I just stopped sharing them because people thought I was crazy. And then suddenly there was a whole series of books and channelings that somehow explained all of it. Yeah. I'm just like, oh my gosh, like this, this, you know, I, I always run things through my body, Lou, to see if, see if they feel coherent. And right from the beginning, this felt coherent. I was like, okay, this seems to me like something that's really important. So that was also another part of what I wanted to bring into the mix today was that you find the right things in the right moments. And, you know, without the understanding of what the stellar nations brought into my awareness, particularly with the dragon codes, particularly with Khan and the mark of the beast and slavery and all of the bad deals that were done with the fallen angels and the fallen serpents around Inaki ancestors and some of us have fallen angel very strongly in our charts including me and I, I came to realize that some of the more difficult aspects of my life were not down to David in this life but were down to these rogue elements that had to be extracted finally from the underworld who've been playing up in these other incarnations that were mapped out in my Antares code and when I got my Antares code it's like oh I know my astrology is kind of strong but wow it's it's like I've been involved in every fall and rebellion that the universe has seen. It's like, does it get any better? And, and thankfully it does, because, you know, when we get to sit in our, I don't know, our cosmic chamber with the guides upstairs, you know, Zach had already told me, he said, brother, you spent 200 years negotiating your next incarnation. And I'm like, yeah, I, I know why. <laughs> I've, I've seen the evidence now, like why I didn't want to come back. And he's like, you were very, very 
sure and precise that if you were going to incarnate this time around that you weren't going to have to go go through the traumas that the last 1500 years of linear time have played out because you know we look at things like the crusades and you know the arthurian timelines and we can see that there have been various attempts by the light to introduce the christ consciousness energy the balance masculine and feminine and for whatever reasons that have only just become clear now through bella's mind time and magic course we now understand that through the use of eclipses and portals the dark forces were timeline stitching they were splicing time and inserting new timelines like the fact that columbus discovered america which is totally absurd and some people <laughs> still adhere to it but there's evidence of romans and egyptian coins in america like surely that suggests that maybe before columbus but there, not by the way there was like several million people living there as well <laughs> so i don't know how you can discover somewhere where somebody's already there like surely they were i don't know anyway so you know that's one of the more obvious uh, absurdities uh, and then we've got the whole gregorian calendar which which is a combination of Julius Caesar's tinkering just before the time of Christ. So we can see again the insertion of a timeline to try and distort the uh, the Piscean age, the Christ consciousness. Mm -hmm. I actually think that Pope Gregory was even possibly a reincarnation of Julius Caesar, finishing his work. Maybe Julius Caesar was one of the British royal family. We're talking about the same beings who know how to time travel. Mm -hmm. I saw a really interesting video that showed recently how many of the so-called British royal family had been born or got married on eclipses. Mm -hmm. you know, if you've ever seen the great, uh, all those slightly gory, uh, wonderful movie that Mel Gibson put together called Apocalypto, he uses the whole total solar eclipse as the portent for the Spanish arriving. Mm -hmm. So we can see... You know, many, many places now, and uh, for those doing uh, Bella's uh, Mind, Time and Magic course, we get really into this in some of the uh, commentaries because we've realized that time is not anything that we think it is. Mm -hmm. And as a time traveler, as a cosmic skywalker, I then realized in the run up to the Oak Immersion that really my higher self, the one who's been guiding me, my intuition, my whole life since I was a little child, often asking me to do things that were completely in you know, uh, opposition to other people around me, particularly my parents as a child, yeah. um, was actually my future self. And that radically changed many things. And once my future self took control of the situation before the accident, what happened? And as the wonderful Zach uh, confirmed uh, after the accident, he said, brother, your system is completely intact. You are going to heal perfectly. And he said, the reason is that your system, your whole field is completely intact. There was no damage done to your energy astral field at all, miraculously. But that must be because of the work that I just did, that final bit of reintegration work, which is why the oak tree asked me to do that work. So all of these amazing synchronicities, all incredibly powerful, were what carried me through the initial shock. Because I fell and I was locked in here on my own. My phone was on another terrace. I had to haul myself out of an empty fish pond on my hands and knees with feet that were exploding literally and painfully. I had to rip my shoes and socks off, haul myself up a ramp. Many, many things that I, you know, I, I could not have gone so well. And I had already made some wonderful connections here in the local town with the local community. And everyone, everyone that I've been guided to spend time with and connect with, those were the people that stepped in, called the ambulance, brought a ladder, climbed over, broke into the house because they couldn't get in. Many things that I wouldn't be here without those people. I'm so grateful to so many of the people that showed up for me in that moment, because otherwise, literally, we wouldn't be having this conversation. But again, this is where the level of trust and intuition comes in, because I've been guided to do all of this for the last year and a half. And I didn't always know why I'm putting time into some individuals or why I'm making this connection. But those were the people that showed up mm. in those moments. And so, you know, kind of gone on, on a little bit of a spiel there, but hopefully everyone's able to follow the dynamics of what I'm sharing here to, to see that in the moment that I felt everything had already been put into place for this to be a profound life-changing experience for me at a life-changing moment for everybody else. And what it did was, you know, it gave me the confidence because I'm like, this has to be something that was what I agreed to, not just a random accident that's like poor me that would have fed my victim self, which was part of what had been stamped into me, which I'll come to in a second. Because I could have gone, oh, I, I can't believe this has happened. I was doing all this amazing work and now I've fallen and now I'm going to be off my feet for six months. Maybe I'll never walk again. All of those terrible thoughts just simply weren't there. Instead, there was my guys going, don't worry, man, we've got you. And then everybody uh, rallied around through the videos that Bella and Pam shared. And I'm like, wow, I never knew so many people cared. And that also lifted me into a different space of like, wow, that's so beautiful. Thank you, everybody. And because of that, there was the space needed to assess how am I going to have surgery on this, which is not something, you know, I've said for many years, like I don't like Western medicine, but sometimes you do need a surgeon and a good one. 
And, you know, given what I've said about the medications earlier, I had very, very big red flags about going to a hospital in Mexico because I've already witnessed and seen horror stories of people who are not right doing healing work on people and getting it wrong. Really bad stories that I was just like, oh, I don't think I want to engage with this. So we took the time. We did dowsing. We checked in with our guides and we were told, like, don't worry, put, put the prayer out. And sure enough, one individual that I connected with in Guadalajara immediately messaged me and said, I know a really good hospital that's a privately run hospital by a friend who's got a really amazing surgeon who he's also had surgery on and really highly recommends. And, you know, I didn't accept that immediately. I, I sat with it for a while and put the feelers out. But in the end, I felt in my body, no, this is the guy. This is the guy that's going to be my surgeon. Mm -hmm. So to cut a long story short, we went to Guadalajara, did the surgery. And I, I'm not going to I, I, I've never had an accident like this. I've never had to, I've had surgery before on my knees as a footballer and stuff, but this was by far the worst. And I was having to trust on every level that this is the right guy. I'm going to survive this hospital with mashed up people, even though it was a good hospital, the people were not in good conditions. The nurses and doctors were fully indoctrinated with all of the often medications, with all the shedding that I'm super sensitive to. And I knew it was going to affect the operation. I'm like, wow, I'm literally walking into a chemical bath here to have an operation that could go well, not go well. So mm -hmm. I was like, guys, like you're really asking a lot of me. And they said, dude, we need you to keep trusting. We need you to keep trusting. So I did the surgery and uh, it seemed to go okay. But then the following day, Lou, this is the bit I want to share because maybe it will resonate with you and many other people is that suddenly the, the pain went from a five out of 10 because they would ask me, David, what, what's the pain right now? I had to do it every hour. Oh, it's a five or a six. Okay. Then it went to an eight and then it was, it was a nine and bordering on a 10. I was like, uh, guys, like the medication's not working. I'm in a lot of pain and something is not right in my left ankle. Not right at all. So anyway, um, the, we shut the door eventually. The, the doctors and nurses couldn't work out what was going on. The surgeon wasn't around. And I said to Bella, we need to do something. I think you need to do some healing work on my left ankle. Uh, something is not right. So she started doing healing work. And as she did that, Lou, do you know what I saw? I saw a sigil of a dragon claw in my left ankle, literally embedded into the, uh, into the heel and the ankle bone. And I also saw rusty nails and I saw a manacle around my ankle. I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> and then afterwards, when I shared this with Bella, because it took 40 minutes, I had to use all of my kind of witchy skills to remove basically what was a black magic sigil from my ankle. And it was the black magic stamp of Khan. You're one of mine and you're always going to be one of mine, therefore a slave. Now, what I didn't realize at that point was that in the Mayan uh, glyphs, number 13, which is my glyph on the body is the left ankle. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I'm sharing this story. This is kind of personal, but I'm sharing it uh, as, as a kind of a motif because what I understood was like really what I had had to do was go in and create the dynamics to go back onto my divine path so that the piece that had always been my back door in moments when my life was meant to go really well, there'd always been an injury, a severe illness, or somebody had stabbed me in the back. I mean, it was almost every year when I look back with that information, I was like, oh my God, <laughs> there's been so many disastrous moments when things were meant to have gone well. And I was like, why do these things happen? And it created this kind of like always looking over my shoulder sensation, which fed the sense of victimhood, which is like had put my whole system into fight or flight. And I'd been in that situation since I was a child. My nervous system was completely shot to pieces, to be honest. I've been surviving with my plant medicines for years. I'm like, I, and when I stopped trying to be that way, really bad things would happen. So I'm like, no, I need to, to stay switched on in the astral planes to deal with anything that's coming towards me. So mm -hmm. I realized that what had happened was my allies had said, dude, we need you to, to trust us. We're going to allow this fall to happen. Even though the dark forces were at play, we're going to manage the process because you need to shatter your left foot so that that thing can be revealed. And finally, the only back door that you couldn't see because there was no way you could see it got revealed. And I was like, wow, there it is. Yeah. And so with all of that information, I've been able to navigate some very, very painful and challenging moments since then, uh, which have got easier since I came back here. Guadalajara, God bless that city, is, uh -huh. is very, very dark. And really, I experienced the nine levels of hell in Guadalajara because we had to stay for a couple of weeks and we were surrounded by all kinds of unpleasant energies. Guadalajara, unfortunately, is going to need to clean up job, as indeed are many cities, I think, like New York and L.A. and maybe even London, as we've talked about off camera. Because those cities have been the centers of darkness. They've been the places where the powers that have been have manipulated time, as we know in Greenwich Mean Time. 
but also when me and Bella were doing the um, the work on the Mind, Time and Magic course, we could see that the square mile of London had been taken by the Romans and the Romans had gone specifically to look for that piece as part of their timeline insertion. So we started to put all these pieces together and we could say, oh my gosh, these guys have also been time traveling from the future back, looking for the PowerPoints on the earth that were part of the Atlantean project so they could put the inversions there so that they could control the financial system, they could control the media or the narrative, the propaganda, which has been going on since you know the greeks <laughs> and they can control time yeah. when you control all of those elements you have everybody else under your thumb and then if you also put stamps of slavery into them which they're never going to find you have these people no matter how much we all wanted to lift out and that's really what i want to share today is that through a process of trust i've been able to look at this this accident actually not as an accident at all Lou, but as a blessing to, to uh, now elevate my consciousness and be able to see what is coming. And so the final part of what I want to share maybe in this last five or 10 minutes is where does all of this lead us to? What is fifth dimensional consciousness? What do we need to let go of to get to a place of non-duality? Well, I would suggest that we need to let go of our victimhood. We need to let go of the pain body, the traumas of the past. But in order to do that, that's why we need to work with the plant medicines in the world to come, once you realize that so-called pathogens, bacteria, these are all created, really, uh, substances, extraterrestrial intelligences even, that are designed to attack our immune system where they're vulnerable. And then you realize that your immune system is vulnerable due to emotional traumas that have been put upon you and then made worse by implants from also from extraterrestrial technology. You realize, oh my gosh, and that's what's mapped out. In the stellar nations, it's all there, even the fallen arthropods, the technologies, the implants, the mosquitoes, the insects. I'm like, all stuff that I've known for many years. I'm like, oh my God, like this stuff was channeled 10 years ago and I didn't know about this. And now I've been working with this and people think I'm crazy. And yet there's a whole material that somebody channeled. I'm like, I'm not crazy. Thank God. <laughs> like, you know, so, you know, this is all, uh, I guess, uh, you know, as part of my time traveling self, I guess I've been able to come back from the future and rebuild the shattered, fragmented aspect of myself that was still stuck in the past, but do it in this present moment with all of the energies available because we're going through the photon belt, which is also when we can connect to the Mayan time stream. So what me and Bella are understanding right now is that we are connected into a kind of a mind stream that includes the likes of, of Jose Arguez and P uh, Pakal Vatan, who was the Mayan king who brought this through. We understand that the Mayans are our ancient ancestors, future time traveling companions who left here their encoded understanding of time, which is what Bella's decoding for us all right now. Because when the old paradigm collapses, as it, as it is basically at the moment, we're not going to have a Monday to Friday, you know, mix up months some 28 some 31 no we're going to lose that structure and that for many people is going to be very disorientating especially if they don't have something else to work with mm -hmm. so that is where i have my star logbook it's where i also have my astrology guide and what i do all the time uh, is i look ahead to the next wave spells and this is what i want to leave people with as a sort of a map i look ahead to the wave spells coming up I look at the energies of them. So right now uh, we are in the final few days of the white magnetic dog, which is all about the heart. The heart is also our conduit to our fifth dimensional selves, unconditional love, creativity. So again, my my spaces I was showing Lou before we jumped on record is basically this room that I'm in with a, a double mattress on the floor because I, I, I'm i immobile. I can't walk. I'm not allowed to walk for at least another month or so. And so I have to crawl around basically like a baby, a child. And so I'm learning to walk again from the perspective, maybe even of something that went wrong when I was a child, maybe be something happened to me at that age where because I've actually lived for many years live with a lot of problems in my body even as a you know as a fairly athletic person it's always felt slightly contorted and twisted mm -hmm. and so I'm like oh well maybe this is you know like a uranium bolt of lightning down my system has like pff, okay yeah. and also you know I now have titanium in my feet so I'm like okay maybe my skywalker needed a bit more grounding into 3d as a way of holding my more multidimensional self in 3D, because the real gig is not to be multidimensional and go out of our bodies. That's great, but in a 3D world, it's not always super helpful. So mm -hmm. how do we hold our multidimensional selves in a 3D body? Well, it turns out David needed a bit more metal in his feet mm -hmm. and a whole bunch of other referring uh, bits and pieces too. So, you know, when we lose these structures of the financial system and we lose the structures of time and even our healthcare system, when we realize that these things are not really serving us, but actually keeping us sick, keeping us 
in servitude. For many people, it's going to be, oh, but I don't know anything else. Mm -hmm. Which is where the fractal nature of the Mayan time, I think, starts to give us a different calendar. And when I start mapping out my, I still use a Gregorian calendar to some extent to map these things out because we're still somewhat in that world. But when I look at the conjunction, and transits that are taking place and tomorrow we have another big world changing one jupiter conjuncting uranus when me and leslie were looking at the astrology in relation to the mayan time but also the stellar nations we saw that from the moment of the total solar eclipse the weekend after the easter weekend and the resurrection of jesus we saw that 40 days later was the jupiter kazemi that happens on may the 18th mm. so when I looked into the astral planes around the eclipse, what I saw was that a portal did open, but because of the prayers, the Christ consciousness light came through very, very strongly with the intention to banish all of that lower inverted angelic energy and to lift out the lower energy frequencies that are still in our world, which unfortunately there are still some pretty nasty ones that the population are going to have to look at that people like me and you have probably cleared from people's fields for many years and don't really like to talk about too much, but are definitely part of the collective wounding. It needs to be lifted and it needs to be done with fire and it needs to be transformed and transmuted. And that is what happened. So now we're in this 40 day journey to ascension, really same as Jesus did when he was resurrected. He went on a 40 day journey before he ascended. And what is ascension? Ascension is really the access to the fifth dimension to heaven. Really, the more I come to understand it. <laughs> So what I would like to share with our audience is that we are in that journey. We are about two weeks into it and we're about to enter into the next wave spell, which is the blue night. And the blue night is all about the dreaming. Mm -hmm. So no matter what happens on this weekend, whether uh, I mean, crypto, Bitcoin is going to halve anyway. So there's going to be some sort of huge financial shift. Whether something kicks off in the Middle East, what I would like to invite everybody to do is like acknowledge that and say, okay, that's part of the end of the finale, but it's not really real. It's it's part of the simulation to shift much of the population who are still stuck in those frequencies, those pain body frequencies. But for those of us who can see that and understand that it's not real, uh, we can now go into the dreaming space. And for the next 14 days from tomorrow, we can dream about how we want New Earth to look, not with any hopey wishy thinky things but from a place of trust it's like why would the higher dimensional forces why would the mayans and the light workers why would the christ consciousness come back at this time if it wasn't for us to be going into that new earth so what i am seeing and as leslie shared on the recent cosmic history codes when we looked at mars conjuncting saturn in pisces she said it's like um, there's a light at the end of the tunnel mm -hmm. but only a few of us can see the light the rest were still very much in the dark. And for the week after the eclipse, I perceived that most of humanity was very much in a dark space and couldn't see. And it's only in the last two or three days and really since the so-called attack uh, from Iran on Israel, which again is part of, I think, the end sort of uh, drama we can say to the story. Uh, I think that we're being given the final elements of the narrative that's designed to shift us. So hopefully, uh, I think I've covered everything, but I want to share with everybody the card that i pulled from my wonderful tarot pack which i'm using every single day and it's card number 44 which oh, is strength yeah <laughs> so i'd like to read just this very short a couple of sentences from the book which i think kind of in many ways uh, uh exemplify what i've been trying to share today mm -hmm. so your true strength comes not from self-reliance alone but from a sincere faith in a higher power the strength to accomplish even the most daunting tasks is yours at this time. You can connect with and channel the power of the universe. The strength card indicates that your ideas are being tested and refined and your relationships are being deepened. No matter what happens, nothing can move you off the course of evolution. As the potency of your connections becomes more obvious, you're able to harness the creative energies that are available to you. Have courage and dive in, for magic is in the process of finding a form to take. When you remember that real strength comes from a combination of your efforts and reliance on a higher power working through you, all is possible. You can do anything now. And that was the card that I asked specifically for a card to share on this call. And that was what uh, was pulled. And I'm just like, wow, you know, that is really what I wanted to share today was that through the process of trust, even uh, a really bad, potentially, uh, you know, life threatening accident can actually be a beautiful gift, as you've also learned, Lou. Yeah. And as long as we don't plug into the pain body experiences of the propaganda and the narrative and actually also, I think the Scorpio full moon is is warning us about the, the difficulties of being in other people's pain body energy fields. 
what I am really understanding is that this is a really a two weeks for us to meditate by ourselves, not necessarily be rude or unsociable, but just be very, very conscious that spending time around people who could still be stuck in their pain patterns um, may somewhat pull us back into those frequencies and actually stop us from dreaming. What I've been blessed enough in this space to do for the last like three, four weeks is dream a lot. I don't have anything much to do. I'm I'm in my own like three-year-old playpen, <laughs> crawling around in my hands and knees. And all I've got is my books and a little bit of the internet and, and my star maps and my imagination and a little bit of help from, from some various medicines that I'm working with to get better. And that's opened up this beautiful visa that's allowed me to see all of this. But if if I had lots of interactions with other people and their world, their world of sickness, as many people are in, I feel great. My immune system is better than it's ever been. And I'm like, but I've had a couple of visitors come around and the moment they brought their energy into the space, it changed everything, even though they're beautiful people. Uh, one of them very much with the medications and his field was full of it. And he he dumped some of it on me. I'm like, oh, no, I don't want that. Thanks. Uh, I really don't want that. So I now just have one carer who comes every morning, a beautiful local lady who comes and cooks me food. And uh, we've got a sort of an energetic connection now that we've worked out somehow, even though we don't speak each other's languages very well. And that's it. And actually, Lou, you know, for, from a point of view of being isolated for potentially months, which could have been really, really like, you know, soul destroying, the opposite has happened. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm actually enjoying this. And for the first time yesterday, I was like, oh, my God, I might have to leave my playpen at some point in the next month or two and start walking. And I was like, ah, I'm kind of enjoying this. Uh, you know, like you, I got the time out that I've been asking for. And my guide's like, see, David, in the end, everything is perfect. Yes, we had to, to do that to your feet or we had to allow that to happen to your feet. Because also the other aspect in duality, Lou, was that when I extracted and um, renounce any aspect of myself in the plotting of the underworld i also lost the protection the underworld gave me yeah. because that's how the mafia works it's like yeah we're going to give you protection like who from oh well it's from us actually but we're not going to tell you that <laughs> <laughs> so for some you know for for some uh reason the dark did push me off the ledge it's like it was out of revenge and spite you you think that you can walk away from us look what we can do to you and so my allies were like, yeah, we had to let that happen on a day at a time because it was the only way that they could get you because you're so protected by all of your allies. It was the only way that they could find him. And it was the second day of the oak immersion. And so the oak is all about cosmic divine time. And so everything that happened was held within that time traveling, you know, celestial being the oak. But it happened on a day that wasn't really part of the oak immersion. And it's like the more I looked at all of that, I'm, I'm just like, this is just incredible. This is the most incredible piece of magic and, you know, synchronicity and symmetry that is way beyond anything that my little, little monkey mind could come up with. And yet it's all played out that way. And I think that that's my final offering really today, Lou, is, is for the audience to, to be in that space and say, wow, like that's pretty far out, David. I know. I, I experienced it. I've lived it. It's been pretty goddamn far out. But at the same time, it's changed my entire perspective on everything and it's given me exactly the compass energetics that somebody's just put there to now step onto a different timeline the new earth timeline where my days are not uh, governed by necessarily what day of the week it is but actually what is the energy of today's glyph mm -hmm. you know yesterday i had to for the first time some slightly challenging energy come into my space that i had to work with and it's like oh no i'm not going to slip back into this world again and my allies like no this is your choice You've got rid of that energy. Do you want to stay thinking about what that was all about? Like, no, I don't. Okay, get back into your dream book and start thinking about what's coming next. And the moment I did that, it opened up to a whole set of new downloads to do with the blue night. Mm -hmm. So I was like, then encouraged, okay, think about what could happen if the financial system collapses. Don't see it as something bad. See it as a game that you can play. See what you can, you know, use your resources to invest in how can you take uh, what other people might see as a disaster and turn it into a success mm -hmm. and like this is where we have to keep transforming all the way every single thing that comes to us there is no place for victimhood anymore there is no place for pain body anymore it all has to be transmuted and that is i think the journey that we're on to the jupiter kazemi maybe a bit beyond um but once we get to the jupiter kazemi lu what i saw was the rest of humanity emerging into a light space and seeing the debris of the collapse and going oh my god like it, it's done and there being a period obviously of shock for some people and the rest of us going great now we can get on <laughs> with the thing that we've always wanted to do and while you, see you lot are catching up we're over here creating with the dream that we just did and you know one of the uh the wave spells leading up to the jupiter kazemi is also the yellow warrior which is all about strategy and intelligence so i'm like okay let's dream in the resources that we need at the individual and collective level and then let's start strategizing how we're going to work with that in our 
new earth timeline to start working out how new earth is actually going to look and rather than waiting for other people to tell us how to do it let's start doing it ourselves let's be the dreamers of our own future isn't that what this is all about everybody so Absolutely. anyway got a little bit over time so sorry for that but no, <laughs> that no. um people were asking what is the deck of cards it's colette baron reads and i can't remember exactly the title it's the enchanted compass is it or yeah it's right here giving a big shout out <laughs> for this pack um you know what it's it's one of these beautiful oracle packs that really the words that are written uh belie the power of the pack itself and you know what i would also like to share at the end of this is that through studying the mind time and my astrology and my glyphs and my stellar nations what i've really come to understand is more of the totality of the higher dimensional being that somehow david here is just a conduit for just a very small part of and at the same time that's been huge hugely humbling to 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 be privileged enough to see a future being avatar back into my body to put together uh, a very very damaged fragmented fractured being who'd fallen a great deal hence the symbology in the fall with the feet too and the landing everything was like somehow the past present and future all happening in the now and in that moment every part of me had come back together mm. and i think that that is really what this whole talk was about today is like how do we become who we truly are we use all of these different wonderful navigation compass <laughs> tools you know there's a reason why me and bella call our show the quantum compass we're trying to show people how we are living our life so that when the collapse happens it's not a shock for us to say hey don't worry about it man we've already got another timeline that we're working with over here and not only that we actually know who we are so we can work with our our gifts rather than needing to to feel special or precious it's like nobody needs to do that you know as me and bella were talking about in the commentary for module number five of uh, my and time and magic we put out the prayer wouldn't it be amazing to have a community where we have all of the glyphs represented because that would be the perfect community it would have all of the energetic components that you need because yeah it's great being a skywalker and being multi-dimensional but that's not great for everyday living you need people that are actualizers and dreamers and refiners and so everybody has this perfect place when you really get into the deeper energetics of the mayan uh glyphs and what they represent you understand that we all have these amazing gifts that our astrology hints at our stellar nations gives a much more in-depth soul aspect yeah. But then we have this beautiful like template that we can almost see and go, oh my gosh, that's me. But it's not really me. It's like a thousand or a million different me's all in one body. And isn't that an incredible thing to be able to see on my eagle's perch and not be attached to even my sense of self has gone. I'm like, I don't know who David is. Is David a quantum plant alchemist? Maybe. Is he a time traveler? Probably. You know, is he a guy that sits and talks? Talks a lot on Zoom, yes, for sure. Like, <laughs> you know, I'm all of those things, and yet I'm none of them either. And so I think that that's where the final loop back to the beginning of this talk about attachments and emotions kind of comes to its full course. So, yeah. Does, uh, do, do we have any other questions that people want to ask? Oh, well, one of the things that I just wanted to bring through is my personal one is Blue Crystal Night, which is yeah. starting on the 21st. Um, the other amazing and uh, beautifully synchronistic, synchronistic thing was tomorrow we do not have a live call we have a day off so catch up on your replays um sit in reflection on on what you've absorbed in the talk so far um and that is due to the fact that bella had to um delay her interview uh because of the situation with david and so that's actually happening next week and so we have a slightly out of time summit this season um <laughs> which is beautiful and perfect um so bella will be coming on her video will be available on definitely on the 24th but it might even be available on the 23rd after we've recorded it and she will be talking more to the magic of the mind calendar and 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 how we can work with that calendar to <clears throat> excuse me create the magic within our own reality and come back into alignment with what is actually natural time for us as spiritual beings having the human experience? But one of the things that I wanted to bring through, and it was from your um, quantum compass discussion when you were talking about this next wave spell, which is starting before our talk with, with Bella it, on the 21st, is when you're working with the blue night, it is all about this dreaming, as you've said. So what plants can people connect into um i know you mentioned in the talk um mugwort obviously um yeah. and i'm going to go and get some from the herbalist tomorrow <laughs> so i can put some under my pillow <laughs> but there was another one and i can't remember what it was 
Yeah, so uh, happy to share that. I, I mean, we every every uh, two weeks we do the Quantum Compass show, which is really me and Bella's way of trying to share a lot of what I've just shared today, but in in a sort of a, a preview format that is a little bit of astrology. Although you know, I'm not an astrologer, nor is Bella. We're kind of amateur astrologers, and I would definitely point to Pam Gregory and Molly McCordon. They also love Astro Butterfly. She does a really great uh, monthly. Um, preview. So I just want to give shout out to the people that inspire me and whose information I follow, which I then bring into what I'm doing. So to give credit where it's due. And, you know, then we we look at, uh, I, I map everything out uh, ahead of time. I look into it and, and sometimes I do some journey work and I feel into it. And then I'd start looking at the Mayan. And that's when I start having conversations with the plants. I'm like, okay, guys, uh, you know, who, who's really good to work with? And sometimes it's like super obvious, but, you know, I have to say the Wormwoods and the Mugwort seem to have appeared in almost every episode. I'm like, hey, guys, come on, you know, give somebody else a chance. They're like, yeah, I know. But like, you know how great we are, Devin. I'm like, I know you're my witchy sisters. I've been with the Artemisias, particularly Mugwort, for a very long time. And Mugwort loves to be center of attention. You know, uh, she's not going to hit me too hard over the head for saying that because it's true. But she is a plant that can offer so much. And actually... Um, you know, she's she can take us into the space of the astral planes, which is really the fourth dimension. It's a human emotional realm. It's where we go when we dream. It's where we go when we die. It's where we go when we take plant medicine often, at least initially, into that more uh, emotional space. And it doesn't matter how much you dream or don't dream. I mean, I remember a lady once who came on a mugwort retreat many moons ago. Lou said, oh, I don't, you know, I, I'm, I love mugwort, but I don't know about this dreaming thing. I, I haven't had a dream for like over a decade. I'm like, oh, we'll see. So we did this dreaming practice with mugwort. And the next day the lady came in and she'd written like 15 pages or something of her dream that she'd had the night before. And, I'm, and she's just like, I, I don't understand what happened here. Was this mugwort that did this? It's like when you came on a mugwort weekend and we called it the dreaming weekend. So yes, and then this is what can happen. So we put mugwort into the mix as the dreaming plant, but that's more of the night dream space. Now I have to say I nearly put Santa Maria as a daydreaming plant in, but it's still got some legality issues around it and people still don't really know how to work with that plant properly. It is the plant of the fifth dimension. It is the plant of the goddess. It is the plant of creativity, but unfortunately it has a huge stigma. It's been bastardized with all of this stuff in the U S and it's kind of in a very degraded space, which I don't like. It's a beautiful companion of mine has been since I was a kid uh, and has always allowed me to access the, uh, the higher future self. And that was one of the weird things that happened actually in the run up to the Oak was I had a very profound conversation with the spirit of cannabis or Santa Maria, as I call her. And I said, so so, how come you've been with me since I was a teenager? And she said, David, we, it was part of what we had to do. We had to make sure that I came into your awareness as a teenager so that you would always have that connection to the other part of yourself, which is what always gave you the slight edge to use your intuition and said, really, that was a deal that your future self made with me, the goddess who mm -hmm. manifests through that plant. And she said that. And that's why I have number 13 as my glyph. My whole role is in service to the goddess, which is really in in service to the fifth dimensional intelligence uh, that is what's needing to come back um the, fi the fifth dimension has ha has got fragmented because of what happened with tiamat all of which leslie explains the goddess the the you know the the great felines leaving the universe and all of those kinds of things they're all coming back now and what i understand from my own perspective is that that's the re-establishment of a much more coherent fifth dimensional uh, realm here on planet earth that everybody can see and feel all of the time it won't just be the domain of us plant shamans and time travelers and skywalkers those of us who perhaps have a little bit more of an edge to connect so so i didn't use that plan but i'm kind of suggesting maybe if you know that plant now that you could i uh, just didn't want to put that out there on youtube so instead the plant i went for was st john's wart uh, which is a really, really beautiful, high vibrational plant, um, very connected to St. John the Baptist, who, of course, was Jesus's cousin. Lots of the Christ consciousness energy in this plant, but also it's my crown chakra connector in mm. my uh, chakra system. It's the one that uh, works to realign my crown chakra, but it's also a way of calling in more light because Hypericum perforatum is a plant that wants to absorb more light. And I would suggest that right now we all want to be doing that. We want to be releasing the dense frequencies. Hence, you know, in the fifth dimension, there is no place for any of that stuff. There's no place for illness because we, we, we will go back to being like our ancestors, I think, and living hundreds of years because we simply won't have an immune system that's trying to keep out all of these lower density things. So I would suggest that you can use St. John's wort as a daydreaming plant. And really with intention, you can take an essence, uh, make a tea or a tincture, but really the most important thing with the plants is just invite them in because since about 18 months ago, when we started quantum plant healing, the plant said to me, 
And Bella, also, you know, uh, the most important thing is when you open a container for these healing journeys that you're doing, you're just the conduits, really. Uh, I guess particularly me because I dieted with many of these plants for so long that they were just part of me. And all my job to do was get out of the way and just say, right, OK, all I need you as participants to do is trust that what I'm saying is true and to receive the transmissions from me and the other teachers into your field because really it's the plant that you're here with that's doing the talking we're all just the conduits for that and you know uh, in that way many people have had profound experiences with plants since and have found that it's actually changed the nature of their reality because you know as you know already Lou once you adjust that dial and you start to realize that plants are actually incredibly profoundly intelligent beings bodhisattvas really who come to help us you realize that wow okay I definitely want to invite you in and you know I often use the example of elder the elderberry tree uh, as as you know the elder mother is the is the queen witch of all witches she knows all ends and she is a, a white witch of the highest order and you know one of the things that she does as a plant medicine is she's able to scan the entire body and she can see without me having to be involved at all. It's like, okay, David needs to purge. He needs to have his immune system boosted. And she will talk to all of the other beings that make up my physical body and work with them at the quantum level. I've said that a lot, but it still blows my mind. It's like, wow, what kind of being can scan my system and work with the other, the blood, the cells, the organs, without me being involved? I don't have to do anything. All I have to do is be a passive observer and trust, again, that word, trust, and invite the being in and say, hey, I trust you, Elder Mother. I don't know what you're going to do. And if I'm suddenly being sick, not think that you poison me, which is what a lot of the Western medicine would say. Or if I need to go to the toilet and expel that I haven't eaten something poisonous, it's like, no, I'm purging your system. So, um, yes, definitely mugwort and St. John's wort are the two plants I would recommend. I mean, I, I've been on a detox journey and I had a massive purge experience, um, 24 hours of purging just on celery juice. So, um, you know, it, it doesn't have to be a psychedelic plant. It doesn't have to oh, be one of true. the well-known plants, you know. It's whatever you're called to work with at whatever yeah. time. And, and they are going to work with you. I don't call myself an energy healer. I'm a conduit for energy healing. And yeah. I channel through me um, whatever wants to come through. My only stipulation is that it's of the highest beings of divine love and light. But they can be plants. They can be galactic beings, you know, whatever. Um, and so when you allow yourself to be the clear channel that we all are, um, and then just trust into the guidance that you're being given. We don't have to know the outcome of what those steps are going to take. When I was on my journey from being paralyzed, which was actually back in 96 for me, um, it was in my 20s, I just had my son. Um, it was a massive journey of trust and faith to the point where I was like, bugger off with your trust and faith. I'm sick of you telling me trust and faith. But eventually you get it. You do, right? For some of us, it might be a longer journey than others, but, you know, eventually you kind of just surrender into it. And when you're in that space, oh, my goodness, I can't tell you. But you're able to then track back and look back at all the synchronistic events. Oh, I was drawn to this person, but then this, this, this and this stemmed from that. It wasn't that I needed anything particular from that person or that that person was the outcome. They were another doorway. They were another conduit into another aspect of my journey that has brought me here. So yeah. trust and knowing and allowing yourself to connect and work with whatever is coming through. Now, for this next wave spell that starts on the 21st, which I think is Sunday, you know, St. John's work, if you're drawn to, mugwort, if you're drawn to. But again, the thing that I love is that you say you can make a little sleep pillow, you know, put yeah. mugwort in a little sleep pillow. If you don't want to ingest it, just have it by the side of your bed or, you know, whatever, whatever you feel drawn to doing. The biggest thing for me is there are no rules anymore. You know, it's about being fluid, about being fluid. And, and Being free. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Because we are in this process of evolution. We we are shifting and changing. And all of the old dogma, whether it's a religion or whether it's a healing modality, is shifting and changing and evolving. So again, the important thing is clearing your field, getting rid of all the white noise, the distraction, the distorted whatever's, coming into your truth that higher guidance that you're able to receive and you are able to receive and allowing yourself to be guided by that 
and and you know letting go as you said <laughs> letting go of our attachment to the rigid structures not being rigid within ourselves because that's when the dismantling becomes painful i mean if you've ever been in a car crash of which i've been in many it's really painful if you're tense but if well, you go like mr soft and you're just like ah, <laughs> you don't get hurt as much that's been my experience anyway <laughs> I, mean... I would completely agree with all of that, Lou, and, and I think that what you've really just nicely done there is, is is summarize and also map out the process that we go through. So, you know, we, we are fortunate enough to live in very accelerated times right now. So what could have taken 10 years to heal really can be healed very quickly right now. And all you have to do is see where am I getting triggered? What is causing me pain? And rather than blaming the other individual or situation saying, oh, my God, you, you did this, you launched rocket into this or you called me this. And da, da, da. it's like, no, 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 no. Like, you know, I remember Mikhail back in 2020. He said to me, David, you do realize everything that's happening to you is you doing it to you. Hmm. Yeah, sure, boss. Sure. Right. But I think it's that 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 guy over there, that real Pendeco man. He's the one who's causing me grief. It's like, well, yeah, he is causing you grief. But why are you letting him? Hmm. Uh, what do you mean? Why am I letting him? He's doing it to me. Yeah, but there must be something in you that is is being triggered by that. Because look, he's not doing it to anybody else. Why is he doing it to you? Because he doesn't like me. Why doesn't he like you? And so the conversation went on like that. And eventually I had to sit there and go, yeah, I think you're right, huh? That was not a pleasant conversation I had, but the boss, Mikhail, Archangel Mikhail, was very strong with me. And he said, you need to start working on this meditation all the time. You know, four years later, I can say, I think I finally got there. Um, but I'm showing that now, hopefully as a shortcut so that if anything triggers you, if you get triggered by the news, if you get triggered by the division that's being created by the Middle Eastern situation, don't get pulled into it. It's not real. It's not a division that's really worth spending any energy on. I do think that there's going to be some deep revelations about what this is all really about, what might be in the ground underneath so-called Israel and Palestine. But that's rabbit hole uh, shows for another another time. <laughs> But another, you know channel. another <laughs> channel, maybe. But you know what? From my uh, my playpen mattress here on the floor, I can sit in my fifth dimensional perspective and enjoy the show and say, hey, I kind of wondered how this was all going to come to pass. Meanwhile, yeah, you guys can get on with that. But meanwhile, I'm going to be doing my dreaming. I'm going to be doing my internal meditations. I'm going to be working with the blue night energy and I'm going to start strategizing with the way spell afterwards. How does all of this come to pass from this world where I don't have any pain anymore? If I don't have any pain my identity is different and that's also shocking to come to that conclusion it's that like, i thought i was doing all right and then i suddenly realized it's like oh my god i'm still running victim through my system here somehow at, at moments and suddenly to be shown the mirror of that by different processes was like uncomfortable i'm like oh my god even though i felt justified in some of it for really good reasons i was like this this pain body is still present and it's it's stopping me from being everything that i need to be so, you know, I, I think that it, it's tough. We need to have, you know, strength. We need to have the strength of, of trust. But if we truly believe that our higher self is never going to do anything that isn't for our own highest benefit, and if we also understand that our higher self might be our future self who's come back and already knows how everything turns out, hence why our intuition is always right, all we have to do is listen to our intuitions. And then we start seeing the synchronicities that you talked about, which is a very dandelion energy and go, oh my gosh, the magic's always been playing out. And that is the difference I would suggest between those of us who are still very awakened in the game and those who may be zoned out or zombified over the last few years and who decided this process wasn't for them. But even now, I've got newer perspectives, which maybe I'll show in a different call um, to do with why that process has unfolded. But in the end, it doesn't really matter, Lou. It's like, it's about us. It's about me. It's about you. It's about how we're connecting in a new earth as equals and opposites and meeting each other. It's like, oh my gosh, you have that amazing glyph that means that you're a dreamer wow what are you going to dream in for us lovely my job is to uh, you know to bring the timelines into a place now you guys have to dream in so you know how are we going to work as a team and you know this is what i just want to share also then and i know that bella's gonna probably say this on her course but right now she's offering a free glyph reading for anyone who signs up for her amazing time defining my and time and magic course which just sits so well with everything that i've talked about today with the astrology, with the wonderful cosmology that that Leslie and the ladies from Hungary bring through. And that's also something I really re recommend looking at if you want to understand your galactic self, the stellar nations pathway, as we laid out on quantumplanet.world uh, last year is profound. And I know that you've been engaging with it, Lou, and I hope you found the material to be as, as profound as I found it. It's literally changed my life, I have to say. So, you know.
no yeah. absolutely absolutely um I, I can't recommend it enough but again it's like there are so many modalities out there and there's going to be the right one for you so again you know, go with what you're drawn to um but the details on how to connect with the stellar nations is on the edited replay of Leslie's call. And of course, I will be putting up on the free gifts page Bella's offering of this um, free one to one session um, for those who purchase the Mayan uh, time uh, course. I, I've i just done it because I realized that it is the blue, blue night and it's like, oh, OK, yeah, I'm blue night. So there we go. <laughs> and you know, what's interesting, Lou, is that Bella's also realized that many people that have come for her for a reading recently have also been blue night activating. So the people who need to get activated are drawn to do these things in the moment that they need them. And I was just like, this is it, this is how it all works. It's all synchronistic and you always end up as one of my cards told me the other day, everything is always exactly how it's meant to be, David. All you have to do is let go and surrender into that knowledge and not find reasons to block, which is where <laughs> the little monkey mind wants to take control of stuff, right? So Absolutely. hopefully, you know, that's come through to the audience today. And, you know, that's why I'm in such a positive space, uh, even though, you know, this kind of difficult thing has happened. You know, I definitely have had good and bad moments. I'm not going to lie. I've had moments where the pain was really bad and, and, I, and I doubted, uh, you know, the veracity of my own beliefs but then almost instantly something would kick in and say yeah but david what about this this and this yeah. oh yeah okay that's true what about that piece of magic that synchronicity oh yeah that's true and so that those are my anchor points that i've built over the last like five to ten years of having those kind of experiences that anchor me back so when i do have a wobble moment or something comes into my field that pulls me down momentarily i don't lose my sense of my fifth dimensional self my higher positivity and say okay yeah but that can't be right because i know Oh, these other truths are already my truth and so this falsehood doesn't work for me and i would suggest that that's what we're going to be offered lots of falsehoods is this the reality you want to live in or do you want to be like lou and step into the activation of your dream space or whatever your true nature is and that is what i think the the mind glyphs are really giving certainly me is a much more codified ah this is who i really am right without all of the trappings that the old paradigm wanted to box me into Yes, I'm a healer. Yes, I'm this and yes, I'm that. But I'm not really any of those things. Those were just tags that you needed to put on an email to show people that you had some credentials to do their clearing work for them. But am I really a healer? No, kind of. I'm more of a time traveler, I think. So so I'm now putting all of my dreaming energy into being that, Lou. And, and I think that that's my final thought is, yeah, step into who you really are by remembering who you truly are, by following your intuition, because your intuition is always on your side. So there we go. That's a beautiful way to end the call. Thank you so much, David. It's been an absolute joy to have you on the show as always. And, you know, sending so much love to your ongoing recovery. Um, I will put Bella's link on the free gifts page, Susan. Um, I will put the link to where you can purchase the Mind Time course. But uh, the fact that she's offering this one-to-one -one session for, for everybody to kind of dive deeper into their glyph, their personal glyph. Um, as I say, tomorrow, there is no live call. It's a, a day out of time for us and we can enjoy the replays. We can sink deeper into the transmissions that have been received and start the process of coming into what are you going to dream in this next 13 day cycle? Uh, what are you going to dream? What does your new earth look like to you? I know what it looks like to me in my heart and I have actually had glimpses of it, which is just fills me with joy. But um, you know, <clears throat> what does it look like for you? Um, and, you know, get hold of some mugwort, get hold of some St. John's wort, or whatever other plant calls to you, you know, uh, don't have to just follow what what we suggest. It's it's tuning into yourself and living your truth. And that's really what it's all about. Your intuition, um, right? It's the same thing, you know, uh, you know, don't listen to what David says. Exactly do what Lou says. Tune into whichever plant wants to come through because it will be the right one for you. We're just giving some suggestions to point you in the right direction. So beautiful <laughs> so i will see you on the final last call on sunday at the usual time of six o'clock uk ten o'clock pacific time one o'clock eastern time i hope that many of you can join us then thank you so much for joining us those who could on this live call at slightly earlier time have a wonderful rest of your day my dogs are dying to go out so i'm going to go for a walk in what is left of the sunshine and i'm sending all my love to you all Take care, everybody. Take care, David. And I look forward to connecting with you again. All righty. Ciao for now, everybody. Bye. Bye.